All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our forum debate on demystifying Asia's entrepreneurs. Now, if there are two topics that are both sexier and more um, filled with uh, preconceptions than Asia's growth story and entrepreneurship, I don't know what they are. But when we put them together and talk about entrepreneurs in Asia, Asian entrepreneurs, I think the area is ripe for a debate about what is the meaning. And so today we're going to take up in proper debate style the question, are Asia's entrepreneurs different from Western entrepreneurs? Our format uh, and our distinguished speakers, I'll introduce them in turn as they come to present their arguments. Uh, but to, just to give you an overview about how this session will work. After an initial um, introduction, uh, we're going to have each side alternating, giving you three-minute vigorous and robust defense of their position, of the motion. First, the pro side, arguing the case for why Asia's entrepreneurs are different. The con side, and we'll alternate with the two sides. I might allow a bit of a rebuttal from each of them. But then comes the most important part, you. I will turn to you for your tough questions for your uh, debaters on stage. So keep in mind, we're doing this in the spirit of intellectual inquiry, in the spirit of getting at something deeper. And, uh, and also, this is not a panel, so we really want to sort of probe the limits of each argument. So do it with a, a slight spirit of fun as well. Uh, that's what we ask you. So no long-winded speeches. I'll certainly cut off my panelists if they go over time. And I ask you, please, in the spirit of keeping to time and, and keeping it interesting, no speeches from the floor either. So uh, I'll, I promise you no speeches from myself either. If we all agree, we can have an even better session than any that we've attended before at this summer Davos. Can we agree on that? There we go. I like to set the bar very high. Great. Um, now, before we start, I'm we're going to take a vote to see where the pulse of the room is. I think you all have uh, voting devices uh, that you can find. Uh, these are uh, fairly standard. You should be familiar with them. Um, and we'll take a vote now. And at the end of the debate, we'll take another vote to see how many minds have been changed. Uh, can we have uh, the screen up, please? Now, I, I ask you one thing. Before you vote, please don't abstain. Let's have a point of view, right? So uh, prima facie, even if you're not 100% there, the proposition in front of this house, Asia's entrepreneurs are different from Western entrepreneurs. Go ahead and pick agree or disagree. Now, raise your hand if anyone doesn't have uh, one of these voting units or, or needs help with using it. And, of course, our people on stage, no voting on behalf of yourself here. Come on. All right. Okay, I think everyone has got a unit. And uh, All right. Okay. Well, we can see a very strong, uh, a strong view from the audience. So, that, so you have your work cut out for you on stage here. We can see uh, uh, you have uh, one side has a, a tough, tough road to hoe, but equally... And you know, moving the needle when you've already got four-fifths of the votes can be difficult. So we don't know who, who this helps, but it's very helpful to know. We'll do this again at the, uh, at the end of the session as well. Okay, I, I declare the voting period to be closed. Very good. Now, without further ado, and as I say, we're going to be um, disciplined on time here. Um, I'm going to invite up our, our first speaker in favor of the motion. Again, to remind, Asia's entrepreneurs are different from Western entrepreneurs. The first speaker arguing in favor of the motion Christina Lampe Onorud, founder and international chairman of Boston Power. Please give her a warm welcome. Four thousand years of different culture and heritage affects how we approach solutions and problems. Having operated in both China and the United States, starting a company in 2005, my experience has been a marvelous journey. And what I've observed is an incredible inspiration on both sides, in both countries. But there are main differences, and sometimes I think it's really, really helpful to acknowledge those differences, seeking similarities, but trying to understand a little bit the heritage where we came from, to understand also how you make win-win propositions or collaborative propositions. And I'll try to share a few of my observations, and I hope that can be helpful for you as you go on to your endeavors and, and your journeys, as well as trying to help, basically, form those partnerships. 
In the United States today, you have an unbelievable admiration for entrepreneurship. And in fact, in the political debates in the United States today, you'll hear both sides argue that is the root and the basic foundation for America's job creation and the future economies. You hear huge awards and acknowledgement of entrepreneurs that dare thinking big, solving big problems. Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year program was initiated 25 years ago that recognizes that things can be done in a different way, originated there. It's very much in the celebration. When I started a company in the United States, my neighbors and friends and colleagues came and served my family dinner. My colleagues at the universities helped and offset basically some of my costs by allowing me to be in their laboratories. What I see in China, and as I actually was in China when I was a company of one, was a slightly different reality. My Chinese friends would be very pragmatic and help me get things done. Once I had a product, it was very easy to sell the idea. My Chinese friends helped me deploy with drivers and set up collaborations. My American traditions helped me foster a win-win proposition as the basic foundation. The main difference, as I see it, is America has been built on the dream of entrepreneurship for a long time. China is right now very motivated on gaining momentum in a global economy. So the cultural differences are helpful to recognize and very important to know. And I think we're looking forward to a future with more humility, but it stems from that knowledge. I'm in fact inspired by having operated in both the Western and the Eastern hemisphere of business and having had an opportunity to grow a global company to solve global problems. Time's up. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, please give a round of applause for the opening intervention. Now let's have our first speaker against the motion, Oki Matsumoto, Chairman and CEO of Monex Group. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, I started my career, I, I, I got born and uh, raised in Japan, and I've never been out of the country till uh, the age of 20, and I joined the Salomon Brothers and Goldman Sachs, the U.S. company, and I became a partner at Goldman Sachs at, at the age of 30. At that time, it was the uh, youngest ever in history. Uh, and I did see no difference in uh, Asian and uh, Western as regard to how to perform the uh, well in the investment banking industry. After that, I, uh, I founded my company. I became an entrepreneur. And I didn't see any difference in entrepreneurship between Asia and the West. And uh, I, I, tell you, I tell you why. Uh, we're not talking about uh, the difference of culture. If, we, if you are asked if the Asian culture and the West culture is different or not, of course it's different. But uh, entrepreneurship is more like, uh, I think the definition of entrepreneurship is more like how to change from what the uh, society is or company is today. How to make a difference. So of course the founding the, uh, the position of the Asia and uh, 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 the West is different, so that how to play the entrepreneurs are different, but how they try to make a change is the same. Uh, if you look about, uh, if you think about a physicist or, uh, or cosmic scientist in Asia or West, they are, they are, they are, they are, they're the same. You know, of course, a number of physicists or number of the uh, entrepreneurs in Asia and the West may be very different, but what they do is totally the same. So I think the entrepreneurs in Asia and the West is the same. And the second, what, what entrepreneurs need is a greed. If it's a good greed, bad greed, or, you know, or social greed, or money greed, or whatever greed, they need to have a greed. And Asia and the West, entrepreneurs do have greed. It's the same. Okay? Entrepreneurs need to have a passion. They, they need to be crazy. And in Asia or West, Wherever they are, they need to be crazy. They need to have passion. It's the same. One minute left. Uh, they need to have a vision. They need to have a power to dream, what to do. It's the same. And also, uh, lastly, uh, statistically speaking, uh, entrepreneurs, most of entrepreneurs to be do fail. You know, I think that the percentage of the failure of uh, uh, entrepreneurs to be is exactly the same in Asia and the West. So I think. 
in any aspects, enter uh, entrepreneurs in Asia and the West are completely the same. So that is my point. Very good. Uh, thank you. And a special compliment from the chair for being within his time, underneath the limit. Um, so we've already heard the, the outlines of the debate. We heard from uh, uh, Christina about win-win. Uh, we hear from uh, Oki Matsumoto about greed and why greed is good, or certainly the right kind of greed. So you can already see there's a, there's a difference in uh, being outlined here by the two sides, which is exciting. Uh, let's have our next uh, debater arguing in favor of the motion. Again, just to be crystal clear, Asia's entrepreneurs are different from Western entrepreneurs. That's the proposition in front of this house. Uh, let's have uh, Feng Jun, chairman and CEO of IGO Digital Technology, uh, approach the podium, sir. Three minutes. Thank you. So although here, many friends can speak English, can understand English, but uh, most of Chinese and most of the entrepreneurs from China, they cannot speak English. So uh, to show my opinion, so later, now I use Chinese to speak. Please use your, yeah. 首先，我。So first, on behalf of uh, the uh, Chinese entrepreneurs, I would like to speak in Chinese. Then, that's a proof of the difference, difference uh, between Eastern and Western entrepreneurs. And due to various factors such as history and religion and various uh, others, we have been traveling on different tracks. Talking about uh, the need for respect, we've got to learn and understand our differences instead of uh, forcing the others to adopt what you are like. And uh, any attempt uh, to force others into the adoption of your practices uh, is not uh, advocated. Uh, the Davos as a platform is one for understanding each other's uh, differences and to uh, identifying the uh, values of innovation. And for innovation, sometimes we have uh, one plus one equals four. But if if those two ones are not well aligned, one plus one is minus one, or one plus one is, is just an X, it's nothing. But, uh, and sometimes when the, the, the two ones are not aligned with each other, one plus one is only one. Is there any meaning to plus the two ones together if it, it only equals one? So, but uh, when we keep our uh, differences, while respecting each other and complementing each other with our respective strengths, then one plus one equals 11 with diversity and with innovation. So uh, Chinese, I think Chinese is a great uh, language. In English, innovation is just a word, innovation. But in Chinese, innovation has two characters, which means to create new value. So the uh, Chinese are always uh, giving full play to uh, such differences while seeking commonalities. And maybe uh, for Chinese entrepreneurs uh, to grow their business, uh, there might have been a uh, different uh, set of uh, rules. And uh, there's a difference between Chinese chess and uh, Western uh, chess. For uh, Western uh, uh, chess, it uh, focuses on teamwork. And uh, for the uh, Japanese soccer, it's different uh, from the Western chess and the Chinese chess. So even within Asia, the Chinese chess is different from uh, Japanese soccer. How can we be the same with the uh, Western chess and Western entrepreneurs? So uh, let's work together, although we are different. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is our sec second uh, argument in favor of the motion. Um, we heard um, about language differences, about cultural differences, and we got a good math lesson as well. And so let's see how the opposite side responds. Our, our final debater today will be John Quelch, Dean of the China Europe International Business School, SEEBS. Give him a warm welcome. Uh, th good morning. Thanks very much, uh, Vijay. Uh, well, where I, where I was educated, one plus one equals two. Uh, and I think that's true whether or not you're in Asia or in Europe or the United States. Uh, the fact of the matter is that, look, you know, what is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who risks their own capital, 
who risks their own capital either in money or in terms of their time. And that is the same wherever you are in the world. Of course there are cultural differences. Of course there are differences in regulation. Uh, there are differences between uh, British entrepreneurs and French entrepreneurs. There are differences between entrepreneurs in London and entrepreneurs in Glasgow. All of this makes entrepreneurship and doing business around the world more fascinating. But it does not detract from the fundamental point that entrepreneurship is the same. It is risking your own capital and your own time. Now, as my uh, eloquent partner said earlier, there are three factors involved in being an outstanding entrepreneur. One is desire, vision, passion. The second is differentiation. You have to be able to put forward a differentiated proposition that adds value to your target consumers. And, you know, thirdly, you need discipline. You need financial discipline. You need not to be doing the same thing uh, to all people, uh, trying to serve everybody. You have to have discipline to focus your efforts. The these are the same characteristics for success, desire, differentiation, and discipline, the same wherever you are, uh, whether you're in France or Finland or China or India. Uh, it's the same. Now, of course, look, the enabling environment, the enabling environment is a big factor in shaping the way in which entrepreneurship is carried out. And yes, in some environments, it's uh, tougher to become an entrepreneur. One minute left. Uh, the fear of failure may be a little bit higher in some cultures than in other cultures. But, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, just reinforce uh, my side of the argument by quoting from Mohammed Yunus, uh, who's well known to all of us as the, uh, the father of microfinance, uh, who said, we are all entrepreneurs. It's just that too few of us get the chance to be one. Now, in some countries, it's going to be a little bit tougher to become a successful entrepreneur than in others where the capital environment is more well-developed. But fundamentally, entrepreneurs are driven in the same way uh, whichever country you happen to be in. Uh, so I strongly urge you to ignore the triviality of the proposition before you and vote for the truth against the motion, which is entrepreneurship is the same everywhere. Thank you. Very good. John Quelch, an aggressive intervention, I think we can agree, um, arguing that entrepreneurs are the same even if cultures are different. So you can see the two sides are taking very different tacks. Um, however, the best critic of the other side is surely the, other, uh, this, uh, the side arguing uh, one side or the other motion. I'm going to give two minutes for rebuttal to each team. Um, and they can use it any way they want. They can divide it up, they can stay silent, or they can come out fighting. I'll start with the pro team, as is custom. Your two minutes starts now. Go. Okay. From here? Go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, from here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, appreciate the point of what is theoretically an entrepreneur. That's, I think we are in full agreement, but I think what in reality makes you an entrepreneur is how you succeed in your environment. And I will make the point uh, that Matsumoto san is making on the no difference at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is a global company, very well-established company. Oops, sorry. And uh, I think that's not uh, really a relevant argument for how entrepreneurship works. I also think that how we make a change or how we see a difference, the reality in differences come very much from framework. And this is where I'm a trained scientist and technologist, engineer, very different in the Econo economic sciences, where you basically frame the proposition. Atoms don't care. They have a law of physics or chemistry. Economics is very different, and entrepreneurship is very, very critical how you frame your proposition and what you know is true and how you embrace that. So I think the cultural differences around hierarchy, how we lead in the Western world and Eastern world are very, very different, and that actually influences the companies very greatly, in my opinion. The other good thing that is very different is how you are a good citizen. So that means what values do you put into your value statements and your corporations? For example, in the United States and Europe, it's very important to give back to communities. In China, for example, it's very important to engage with universities in a different way. So those very much affect how you run. So our target is to, uh, to understand each other, to know the difference between us but 
uh, we should respect the difference. Yeah, otherwise, it's war. Yeah, yeah so why before Japan and the German, they want to all the same, and so war is terrible. <laughs> Okay. So Olympic uh, on that yeah. philosophical point, okay, I'm going to okay. stop you. So Olympic uh, and the Davos, okay. this is a peaceful because Let, this I, I'm sorry, understand each other. I'm sorry, your, your time is up, <laughs> and you can blame your partner for taking up most of the time. Two minutes to the side opposite to come back with some rebuttals. Uh, well, well, first of all, I would say look at what Steven Pinker of Harvard University says, a world-class psychologist who points out that we are all wired the same way to the point of 95% of who we are, what we stand for, what our aspirations are. Yes, there is the last 5% uh, where there are differences from one culture to another, but 95% we are wired the same way. That's why we are able to have a globally integrated uh, economy, uh, because there is such similarity across national boundaries. And I would also question this point about Asian entrepreneurs. You know, does anyone here believe that Japanese entrepreneurs and Chinese entrepreneurs are any more similar than American and English entrepreneurs? In other words, within Asia, there's no homogeneity either. So the motion falls on the concept that uh, there is this thing called an Asian entrepreneur. It's just something that the World Economic Forum made up to get you here at 9 o'clock uh, on the first day. And pretty successful, I would say, given how full the room is. We have one more minute for the rebuttal. Well, the uh, environment and uh, uh, entrepreneurs are, are quite different. Because, uh, as I said, you know, uh, environment or culture or framework, I, I think in, in, the, what entrepreneurs do is to how to change those, uh, all those uh, how the pre, preconditions. So I think the uh, argument for you to say that uh, you know, environment or framework or the way to do is different is nothing to do with what is the uh, entrepreneurship. Because entrepreneurship is, by definition, to change or to, 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 to be different from those uh, traditional way of doing businesses or whatever in that region. All so right. by definition, it's the same. Very good. Uh, within time. So you've seen their initial salvos and their rebuttals. Um, I want to uh, put, put the question uh, on the basis of the, the chairman's prerogative, as it's called sometimes, um, and, and uh, to a couple of these uh, uh, points that have been made. But I want you in the audience to start getting your questions ready. As I mentioned, your participation is vital to the success of this. And we want to keep these guys honest, don't we? Uh, we they seem to be having too much fun. So let's, let's make sure to grill them on their points. Um, but I thought, um, I was struck by something that we heard from, uh, from John Quelch. Uh, John, you were talking about an entrepreneur risks his own capital, if I seem to uh, recall correctly. Um, and, and that doesn't differ around the world. Um, if you're in an economy, for example, um, as many uh, Asian economies are, with a very large role for the state, China being a great example, we're here convened in China, um, where access to capital, where how capital is directed, uh, can be very, very different. Um, where risk capital, for example, um, uh, in the culture of be that early stage or, or venture or uh, PE financing is not well developed as it is in Western markets. Doesn't that actually change in practical terms what an entrepreneur does and what it means to be an entrepreneur? Well, I think, I think it makes it more challenging for sure. But don't, re don't forget, 40, 50 years ago, there was not the same ecosystem of entrepreneurial finance available in the United States at that time. And Americans who wanted to go and set up their own organizations had to rely on family money. They had to scramble around as well. Uh, and so I think that the, uh, the concept of uh, where you get the money from you know, that can be more challenging in one place than another, uh, but it doesn't make uh, any difference to the fundamental point that you have to put your own reputation, your own money, uh, and your own uh, time on the line, even if you're raising money from your family uh, or for a, from a loan shark in southern China uh, rather than from a legitimate bank. Um, does my side uh, opposite want to jump in on that in any way? I'll give you the opportunity to do so if you like. Yeah. So I think uh, that is, of course, true. We all risk our, both our reputation, our knowledge, and our capital. Um, but I think, uh, again, to me, this is very theoretical. So the definitions, I think we don't disagree on. But the reality of making a company happen in China 
or the United States, if we just make the two extremes of those, are very different. In China, you have to recognize that the government is very involved, not only in the capital structure, but also in how the markets develop. You actually have to be very connected in the government to succeed and recognize that most of the initiatives are somewhat state-connected, also both locally and federally. Where don't, don't, don't you think, Christina, mm-hmm. don't you think, you know, <clears throat> if we're in the United States, what's the biggest complaint that small business has? What's the biggest obstacle to entrepreneurship in the United States? It's government regulation, government red tape, government bureaucracy. So I don't see it quite like that, actually, because in America you still have a very robust legal system. You have access to capital markets anywhere from... Uh, crowd financing to venture capital to angels to private equity it is all available to you and frankly you have the opportunity to dream up any idea and you don't need permission from the government at all yeah but the motion is not that the enabling environment is different in asia versus the u.s but the entrepreneurs are different so let, let me um, uh, turn the tables and, and put a question to this side um, uh, christina i think you made the point about uh, win-win and collaboration um, uh, I'm a little troubled because oftentimes um, uh, things are posited as win-wins or even better, win-win-win, um, when in reality uh, there are often trade-offs in real life. Um, so can you help us understand this point uh, a little better and, and, and so that I can make sure to come back at you with a better question? Because at the moment I'm a little confused. Sure. So I think it's critical for entrepreneurs, and I actually think this is part of what is global. So you have to establish in most economies an opportunity for you as a young entrepreneur or a young growing company with a big idea, an opportunity for others to support you in that mission and also have a win opportunity. And I think the difference here, again, that um, Asian entrepreneurs and operating in Asia, you have to be very, very careful what the (laughs) central policy is, which in my case was a great help, uh, which was actually not possible in the United States to do the same type of vision. So we deployed green cars. But the opportunity... Was it of great help because you had the right relationships, for example? Something that's sometimes emphasized in Asia? I did not have them, but I got clearly involved. So I accredited my products very early on, which I think actually benefits the, the consumers in the end because it's easier to pick out green products than not green products. But that's a government initiative that really works but you have to pay attention to it, and you have to recognize that as uh, something where you grow the company and you establish the leadership and the culture in the company. So entrepreneurship, per definition, in my opinion, is a people business. How do you run the people, and how do you set priorities in that? Any uh, come back from your side? It's no different wherever you are in the world. You, you are an entrepreneur. You are sensitive to the local environment. You pick up on what needs to be done in any environment you're operating in, and you go for it and you risking your capital, your reputation, and your time, and that's fundamentally the same, and that's why entrepreneurs all over the world have this common bond. You know, that's why Tony Fernandez of Air Asia, you know, knows Richard Branson of uh, Virgin so well, and there's very, very great similarity between the two of them. Great. Um, So again, uh, 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 no closer together than when we started, maybe further apart uh, in our debate. Uh, I'm going to turn to the audience in just a moment. So I want you to get your questions together. We do have microphone runners. uh, But first, I want to welcome our um, expert uh, uh, on the topic, um, uh, Lin Yu, uh, who is um, going to offer a a challenging question uh, to one of the, the speakers of his choosing. Please. Okay, uh, I, I, I just uh, got a question. Um, how many, uh, I mean, foreign entrepreneurs do you know? Uh, I mean, for maybe... Lin Yu, just to be clear, it looks like you're addressing the side in favor of the motion. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And uh, how many times do you uh, communicate with them? And uh, do you have, uh, do some business with, uh, I mean, the foreign entrepreneurs? And uh, how do you feel it? Yeah, so uh, five years, uh, I meet many entrepreneurs in Olympic and uh, in Davos. Yeah, so uh, the principle of the business is the same, but the culture, the environment is different. Yeah, so we must respect. We cannot change the the point. (laughs) Yeah, so, so now the big problem is uh, everyone use their old way to think and think other people should understand them, should follow them. 
Sorry, it's different. Just now I see that the Chinese people, we play Chinese chess. Yeah, so the canon, you cannot understand what's canon inside. Because in West uh, chess, you never have this point, canon. It can jump. A little like the middle, uh, the Chinese medicine. You, you know, there is a film named Gua Sha. Yeah, so many Chinese people have seen that film. I hope that the Western people, uh, the friends, can watch that, that, that uh, film. Because that's a Chinese medicine to cure the cold. The grandfather cured the, the, the grandson's cold. But in the United States, they think this is the abuse of children. Yeah, so to catch uh, the children's father and put in jail. Right. And not let them to, to, together. So this is not understanding each other. They always think other people should follow their opinion. Yeah, so it's terrible. <laughs> so the Davos is a great place because we can understand each other. And here we debate. This is the difference. Yeah, so I agree with you. The principle, we should be similar and similar. But we must respect the difference. Great. Thank so, you. so Feng Jun, what I understand is you're sticking with your guns on the argument that culture, social norms, which are so different, makes entrepreneurship different. So we're, we're hearing yet more of that. Let's turn to the audience and we'll come back to our expert, Lin Yu, as we go forward, as he has questions coming up. Uh, just uh, let me know. Uh, okay, let's have a show of hands. Uh, who has a good question to put to our uh, moderator? Do I see a hand back there? Okay, there? okay, I see a gentleman back here. It was the first hand I saw. We'll come to the lady next. Uh, just a couple of ground rules, sir. Please identify yourself and a short and sharp question. Uh, nobody likes a gas bag. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Herbert Chen. I come from Tsinghua University Science Park. The, what a science park is doing is we're cultivating... Your, your question, sir, please. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Uh, the culture is different, but now we are living in the same village. So if we say, why in the Silicon Valley? There are so many high-tech companies can grow up so quickly. It's one by one, one by one, but not happening in China. So if you think we have to follow, uh, if the company in some country will have to follow that country's culture, in that case, when China have uh, a thousand of uh, high-tech companies can become IBM or so, so uh, okay. Microsoft. Great. That's so, my question. So you, you raised the prospect of Silicon Valley uh, and the well-understood and su uh, successes. Uh, I see uh, my, one of my debaters wants to uh, take the question. Okay, so if Asian guy go to Silicon Valley and became an entrepreneur, what does it mean? Is that, is, that, is that classified as Asian entrepreneurs or American entrepreneurs? Right? So we just talk, you're just talking about cluster. It, 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 you know, it, it's not uh, the difference between Asian entrepreneurship and uh, U.S. entrepreneurship. U.S. just have a better cluster as of today which China or Japan who may have, uh, you know, same, same really good cluster in the future. I don't think uh, it doesn't really talk about the difference between entrepreneurship between Asian people and uh, Western people. Do, do I want to hear, uh, or will I hear a rebuttal here? Yeah, or do I need an, to make it myself because I, I have one? That's, that's an excellent point. But I think the fundamental reality, again, is you will basically react to the reality with a framework that you can see. So I think without recognition of your roots or where you are. So many of us have had the privilege of living in many countries and find ourselves as global citizens in the end. But I think the way we lead and the way we execute still comes back to the fundamental traditions that we were brought up with. And hopefully as we travel our life journeys, we gain respect so we become easier to collaborate with. I'm going to come at you. You're much too diplomatic, I think. I'm going to be ruder, if I may, uh, taking, again, the chairman's prerogative. Um, you said that it has to do with clusters. Now, what if somebody who was born in Japan or India or somewhere else, Asian, goes and makes a big success in Silicon Valley? And we do know that's a, a quite common occurrence. Um, what does this say about Asian? And you said it's up to the cluster, right? What's sometimes been called the ecosystem. Um, but then you posited that this can happen in future uh, in Japan. But Japan has had a long run of development um, it has not happened. Um, uh, can you explain that, especially as a veteran of both cultures? Uh, can you tell me? So that you're talking about uh, uh, culture. Entrepreneurship is more like a characteristic of uh, uh, one human being. 
Entrepreneurship is not the characteristics of the culture or society. So you don't believe that some cultures are more entrepreneurial than others? Well, you know, some culture may be more friendly to entrepreneurs, like uh, the West and Asia, particularly Japan, are very not so friendly to entrepreneurs. Mm. But it doesn't, it doesn't talk about the difference between entrepreneurship of Japanese and Americans or Spanish or Indians or whatever. So I, th I think, I think one, uh, one way of thinking about this is that the, the entrepreneurship trait, if you like, the propensity to be an entrepreneur is evenly distributed across humanity. But the, the, the environment, uh, whether it be culture, regulation, uh, history, uh, institutions, uh, that can affect the degree to which it's possible for the entrepreneurial trait to be activated. And okay. to be realized. So we're really getting a, a philosophical difference on nature versus nurture, if I can get to that. There's a, a lady who's been very patient. Again, please identify yourself and a short question. Okay. Uh, my name is Ihan Hu, and I have a question to Matsumoto. Um, so Matsumoto-san said, um, you know, the basic fundamental characteristic for an entrepreneur is, um, you know, greed, good greed or bad greed, and the passion to change, to change the precondition. But um, in reality, um, many uh, foreign, uh, foreign companies, when they enter the, you know, the Japan market or when they enter the Chinese market, they try to conform themselves to, to the political and the business environment here. Um, you know, I know... You're going to um, bring it home to a question. So, um, you know, how would you explain this when they hire, like, coordinators to try to coordinate the head at the Japan office and the Chinese office? If everything is the same, then why the coordinator is needed? Thank you. Okay, thank you for your question. But those companies you mentioned are not the entrepreneur. They are just the traditional boring companies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you did. <laughs> You reject the premise of the question. All right, excellent debating tactic. Let's go back to the audience for a, another round. Uh, I see a lady here near the front. Let's give you the microphone, madam. I'm sorry, let's, uh, let's wait for the microphone to come on. Sorry, not yet. Can we get a microphone that works, please? Or Just because we're recording this. So my question is to Li Yuyun. Is your view on the way China is currently governed by the Chinese Communist Party, or is it more influenced by the central government's policy? I think the market situation is quite different, but maybe it's not the focus of today's topic. Okay. All right. Very deftly played, Mr. Expert Commentator. By the way, since you have the microphone, would you like to ask another question of our of our panel if something is burning? Preferably on 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 our side, arguing against the motion. Yeah, of course. Do you think the sprint and essence of entrepreneurs are same? I mean, either Asia or Western entrepreneurs. So maybe you can explain that. I mean, the sprint, the sprint of entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, th I think the question is, uh, is the uh, spirit of entrepreneurship uh, similar? Uh, in my opinion, yes. I mean, I have uh, been living in China. I find many, many of our outstanding CEIBS alumni uh, setting up wonderful companies doing extremely terrific entrepreneurial uh, success in China. Uh, I see passion, I see differentiation, I see discipline in what they do. Uh, so I, I see China as having an entrepreneurship potential that is absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, the full fruit of it is going to be realized in the next 10 years uh, because, as you know, the five-year plan calls for a shift towards more of an innovation-led economy from an imitation factory-led factory to the world economy. And Chinese entrepreneurship is going to respond dramatically to the call for more innovation. I'm hugely optimistic about innovation and entrepreneurship in China. Um, anything from the side opposite? You're welcome to, to make a comment. Uh, relevant to his? Yeah. Um, one thing. Uh, I think why we admit the difference? Because we want to learn from each other. Because when we have the difference, we can learn. So for Chinese companies, our uh, entrepreneurs, our biggest problem is our teamwork. You know, in this Olympic, uh, Chinese uh, athletes, we get 38 uh, gold medal, but uh, all is individual. No 
teamwork. So for basketball, for volleyball, for football, China, nothing. Why? The coach was different. Because you play international chess. So your, all the rule is for teamwork. So it's very easy for you yeah, to, in your country, teamwork. But in China, yeah, uh, the canon is for innovation. But the others, we stop the innovation. We stop the teamwork. It's very difficult. Yeah, so uh, if you don't know the difference, uh, you, like the uh, football coach from Germany, yeah, teach China team, never win. Mm -hmm. Why? <laughs> because the coach is different. He never know the coach will hear. So he thinks they are the same. So never work. So right. if understand each other more, you will find everything is so easy to understand. Oh, sure. Thank you. So, um, uh, yet more sporting and, and, and sh uh, game analogies. Uh, used to be said in Britain, you know, the, the, the wars of Britain are won on the playing fields of Eton. It could be the entrepreneurship battles of China are, are won on the football pitches of the Olympics, perhaps. Um, I think there was a microphone already in the back, am I right? Uh, uh, can the person stand up, please, who has the microphone? Okay, again, please identify yourself. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, oh, sorry, it's in the front. Um, again, uh, short uh, question. Good morning. I'm from the uh, okay, thank you. call center of uh, China Mobile. Um, I fully agree with uh, Chairman Feng Jun. I think for every entrepreneur, uh, his or her cultural setting and environment uh, do play a pivotal role in his or her success. My question is like this. When a business led by an entrepreneur globalizes itself, it has to observe a global set of rules and norms. So in such circumstances, Chairman Feng Jun, when an entrepreneur tries to globalize his company, then in, at this stage, uh, we should look at more homogeneity or commonalities between a Chinese and a Western entrepreneurs. Oh, yes, I uh, do agree with the uh, premise of your question. Uh, recognizing uh, differences uh, is uh, the first step uh, for improvement. How many of you can play the Chinese mahjong? Please raise your hands. How many of you can play the Chinese game of uh, mahjong? Uh, please uh, raise your hand. Who can place a bridge? Please raise your hands. Bridge. Bridge card. Yeah, who can play bridge card? Yeah, all chess, international chess. Yeah, so all the Western... Friends, yeah, they know how to play. So, that's the key. In order for the Chinese to be entrepreneurs, we need to settle down our internal circumstances first and foremost. The Chinese mahjong sometimes has beaten us throughout our thousands of years of history. Uh, the Chinese emperors were afraid of their people coming together. Uh, therefore, they used the mahjong to uh, alienate the Chinese people, in a, uh, pitching them against each other in the mahjong game. But in international chess, it is all teamwork. Like uh, the, uh, the two what we call elephants in Chinese chess. Uh, in Chinese, the two elephants are opposing each other. While well, in international chess, uh, the two are in black and white are playing with each other. In 1979, Deng Xiaoping introduced the bridge cards into China. Then China unleashed sea uh, changes and tremendous reforms. So with those analogies, I would like to say that um, for whatever position we take in this debate, I still respect the perspectives of the opposing camp. Let's give them a warm applause. Well, not yet. No, don't be respectful yet, but we have yet to take the vote. However, Mr. Feng Zhen, you can offer to teach the Westerners mahjong later this evening over some cocktails. Uh, let's, let's hear a rebuttal. You know, uh, it's now time to stumble into the uh, mutual respect mode uh, as we're entering the last 10 minutes of the debate. So uh, let me reciprocate uh, that... Uh, uh, from the point of view of cultural differences, there is obviously a need for that mutual respect. Any entrepreneur doing business outside his or her own country knows that to succeed, they have to make those adaptations. If they don't make the adaptation, uh, they fall flat on their face and fail. So they learn from their failure. 
but let's not magnify, over magnify the differences. Let's focus on what's similar across national boundaries, what's similar across countries, sure. the entrepreneurial spirit, the fundamentals of what it makes to be an entrepreneur and to be successful as an entrepreneur. These are the same across nations, across cultures, uh, within nations, and uh, I have absolutely tremendous respect for understanding differences. That is what makes the world a wonderful place. But if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to know how to count from one to ten. You've got to know how to calculate uh, your cash flow and your working capital, and you've got to know how to relate to people who you have to do business with uh, in order to bring home the profit. That's the same wherever you are. All right. Oh, uh, okay, Matsumoto, a 30-second intervention. You're dying to say something. Okay. Uh, entrepreneurs need to be innovative. So if, if you think about the new style French cuisine chef, yeah. you know, if you're Chinese, if you're Japanese, French, whoever you are, for the new style French cuisine chef, anyone can be, can be that. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't this, it, you know, the, your history background or doesn't matter. So entrepreneurs is such that anyone can, can be entrepreneurs, both All in right. Asia and the West. Um, uh, we will um, uh, pick that up in a little bit, but let's go. One last question, probably a short question and short answers because we're almost out of time. Hi, it's David Michael from BCG in Beijing. And I got to push back on my good friend, John Quelch. Just a minute ago, you highlighted that uh, because of the new five-year plan in China, entrepreneurs would respond to the call of the government. But isn't that exactly the problem? Shouldn't entrepreneurs be responding to the marketplace and to the needs of consumers and not waiting for the call of the government? Uh, you're, you're absolutely right, David. And of course, there are, there are tens of thousands of entrepreneurs in China in the private sector who are already doing that. Uh, many of them are our own alumni. But I think that, uh, directionally speaking, uh, it does help if there is an overarching vision of where the, uh, the nation needs to move. And I think that uh, that call is going to be resulting in much greater levels of intrapreneurship uh, within state-owned enterprises as much as it is uh, going to motivate more uh, entrepreneurial activity and hopefully better availability of capital uh, for the uh, private sector as well. I think, you know, one other thing that we're seeing develop in China is role models of entrepreneurs, uh, Jack Ma, et cetera, just in the same way as we've seen that in uh, Western com countries. Uh, I think uh, the ecosystem is going to develop very fast for entrepreneurship in China. Uh, and I say, again, I'm very optimistic about uh, world-class entrepreneurs coming out of China. But they won't be world-class if they're focusing all the time on what makes people different instead of what makes people similar across national boundaries. And consumers around the world have fundamental needs, similar aspirations, and companies that want to be global should look for the similarities across boundaries, not focus on the differences. All right. So yet again, stark lines of contrast. Now, we're getting very close to the end. Um, I want to do something a little bit impromptu. I'm, I'm going to turn uh, to each side and give them 30 seconds to sum up uh, just one key point they want to get across. They can uh, figure out which of their speakers is going to do this. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to look at the audience and say, uh, raise your hands if what you've heard has made you change your vote when we take the vote in a few minutes. Has anyone uh, been influenced to change their vote? I see two hands in the front row. Don't be shy. Come on. Uh, or are you all so decided? Okay, we see a number of hands. Okay, this is very good. Let's get the microphones ready. I want to hear from one person who changed from being in favor of the motion and is going to vote against the motion. Uh, hands up. Who, who's going to vote that way just now? Uh, uh, do I see any hands who, of someone who voted? Okay, way in the back row. Let's get a quick comment from you, sir. What did you hear that persuaded you to change from in favor of the motion to against the motion? Again, I give your name and just a short comment on what persuaded you. 你好，我来自第一财经日报。
我们听了这一场辩论以后，我们自己认为就是统一不要学校授权观点。学校精神在去呃，撞快。尽管尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管在这里，尽管
Um, so there is a certain sample bias, if one is to be rigorous about it. But what is undeniable, though, is that the latecomers, maybe because they're in a foul mood or they have particularly odd views about entrepreneurship and they come late, they clearly sided with the team opposing the motion. So let's give them a round of applause. I'm going to declare them the winner in this. But I think we're all winners for having had such a, a wonderful, robust, and spirited debate. Thank you all very much. And from my perspective, uh, I want to thank uh, all of you for uh, coming in good nature, asking terrific questions. Um, I think uh, we started off with the right spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, I want to thank the organizers as well for letting us do a new format uh, for Summer Davos. Uh, I hope you'll agree. It worked. It got us off to a good energetic start. And in a, in a shameless bit of self-promotion, uh, I want to mention that um, my book on the future of entrepreneurship and innovation called Need, Speed, and Greed, your favorite topic. Need, Speed, and Greed is uh, not only available in English, but will be published in Chinese in January. So uh, check it out. I'm happy to talk to everyone. Thank you very much.